goal uh, tonight is to tell a story, and I'm hoping that story resonates with a few of you. Um, as I've said in various webinars that I've done and, and speaking engagements that I've done uh, around the world, um, <clears throat> the goal here is, is to, to give you one thing. Um, and one thing can be a very powerful thing in trading. If, if I can, you know, say something or if, uh, you know, I touch upon a subject that, that hits home uh, and you walk away saying, you know what, that really resonated on me, whether it was a technical thing, uh, an actual, you know, playbook thing, uh, we talk about the X's and O's, where to buy, where to sell, that kind of stuff. Or we talk about, you know, what goes on in between the ears, which is really where trading occurs, and that's, you know, in, in your brain. Because um, I do believe that, you know, 80% of what we do is, is how we think uh, and how we perceive and analyze risk. Uh, and a lot of that is, as I've learned, unfortunately, the hard way, uh, through my tenure as a trader in the markets, um, you know, it, it, it does come down to, you know, how we... Uh, control ourselves and how we uh, think rationally, uh, you know, when we approach the, the concept of making money via trading. Um, and I'm going to go through a couple of rules tonight. Uh, here's the disclaimers. You can, you know, kind of glance at them while I, while I do my, you know, my intro. Um, my, my story is, is, is not necessarily unique, but, but it is a story of uh, failure into success. And as I've, you know, taught various people throughout my years, uh, and as I've traded myself, you know, everything I've learned um, has been by process of, of most likely doing it wrong. Um, and, and not to say that in, in, in trading there's, there's this, it's a very structured thing where there's black and white, there's wrong and right. And it's not necessarily that simple. If it was that simple, somebody would write the rule book and we would all be making tons and tons of money, you know, each and every, you know, day, week, month, year. Uh, but it's not that way. And with trading, there is a level of uh, confidence that needs to be built. There's a level of subjectivity that you need to learn how to interpret. Uh, and there, there are certain characteristics of, of what define uh, a good trader. Um, and this is basically my story. Uh, and it's, <clears throat> like I said earlier, my, my evolution as a trader, and I'm still evolving. So even though I, you know, I'm, I'm on the podium and I'm speaking, uh, that doesn't mean I, I've, I've stopped learning. Uh, and I learn new things, you know, every day, every, every week. Um, but I was a, you know, trader who was a product of an environment. Uh, I, I was very fortunate in the late 90s. Uh, I started trading in the dot-com era. Uh, uh, as a result of that, I was able to, you know, basically go to the, the, the money tree and, and, and shake the tree and money would just fall, fall you know, fall, fall into my hand. And it was a great time. Uh, but at the same time, while it was happening, what I wasn't doing was I, I wasn't learning. I, I really had no foundation. I just came in and, and I was the, for those that are familiar, I was the, the who moved my cheese. Every day I'd come in and the cheese was there and I'd, I'd, I'd get a piece of the cheese until one day the cheese was gone. But for, for several years, um, I went back to that same place every day looking for that same piece of cheese. Uh, and those were, those were very, very tough times for me. I was not the guy that, that you know you probably read about that made a lot and lost a lot. I never really lost money, but I stopped making money. And when you, as a trader, when you experience the 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 euphoria of of making money, um, you think you've accomplished something. You think you're you're good at something. Um, at least I did. I thought I was a good trader because I, I made money. Uh, and when you know, like I said, when the cheese was gone. It was a very tough pill for me to swallow to recognize that you know what I really had no skill set I had no I had no craft I was not an artist I didn't know how to mix my paints and my you know my paintbrush and 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 make my picture I thought I did because I had you know some level of money to 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 show that I had some some skill set or some talent um, but but as I said before that to me that, that time period of my life which was you know the the early 2000s was the most valuable time in my life and I would trade the late 90s in I know some people are going to say he's he's full of BS but I'm not I would give I give it all back if I could do it again if I could hop in my DeLorean and go back in time um, I give it all back to start off on the right foot uh, and and you know I've evolved <clears throat> like I said that the period in my in my life where I you know stopped making money was a, was a time of transformation and I had to figure out 
what it was that was going to either make me successful or find something else to do. It really was that simple. Um, and, and, I, and I try to, when I, when I explain some of, some of my trading and my methodologies and my processes, I try to keep a level of simplicity in all of it because it really has to, for, for most of us, again, I'm not a genius. Uh, I don't come from some fancy, you know, Ivy League school with, 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 you know, lots and lots of letters after my name of degrees. I have to keep things simple in order to keep this, you know, my, my trading and, and what I do functional and, and moving forward. Um, the harder that I've made it, the harder, and everybody does this, it's, it's over analysis paralysis. You know, you think that you have to know all these things to actually make money, and, and you really don't. Um, it, it really, at the end of the day, is up, down, and sideways. And sometimes we get lost in the, the indicators and the oscillators and the, you know, all the, the moving parts to, 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 to those that trade actively, whether you're a day trader or a swing trader or, or you know, anything in between. Um, I, I see it. I've seen it, you know, I've seen the repetition from people over and over and over again. Um, so, you know, I want to get through a couple of points that I think really help define my evolution and my, or my re-evolution, I should say. The, the period of my life where, you know, I struggled immensely to the point where I was one and a half feet out the door to, to finding something else to do professionally to the point where, you know, I, I not only became, a, you know, a, a successful trader in and of myself, but I've built a trading firm, a broker dealer around it, T3 Trading Group that has about 700 traders, uh, you know, trading firm capital to, uh, you know, an education firm in T3 Live that, that I manage, you know, every day. Um, so I've been able to leverage my, my core competency in, into several different ways beyond just, you know, buying and selling stocks. Uh, and, and that really was my, my way. And again, it's, I'm not a charity. I do it all for profit. And I'm certainly not here to, you know, uh, present a case that I'm, that I'm, you know, doing this out of the kindness of my heart. But, but it really, you know, what I do and, and what I talk about over and over again, it really is based on, you know, some, a couple different rules. Um, and I know that the, the word rules is thrown around a lot. We talk about rules with discipline and, and you know, that, that word seems to get thrown around a whole heck of a lot in, in the trading world. But I'm going to talk a little, I'm going to take the five rules that I kind of live by. Um, and, and they're not very technical. And then towards the latter part, we're going to get into some trades and look at some of the stuff and, and you know, do a little bit of a deeper dive. Um, so this is a quote that I, I, I have on my, one of my trading monitors. And I think it's just so brilliant. Um, I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games. 26 times I've been trusted to take the game-winning shot and missed. I failed over and over and over again in my life, and that is why I succeed. And that really is trading in a nutshell. You know, I tend to focus on the things that didn't go well for me and how I could, could use those to, uh, you know, better myself or enhance myself. And, you know, Michael Jordan, who obviously everybody I'm sure is familiar with, you know, you know, to me, this is the most poignant thing he's ever said, um, and something that I, you know, really, really, you know, to the point where I, I, I look at it every day, um, just to reaffirm it in my head. Um, a little bit about me. I'm the CEO of T3 Live. I, I you know, I've kind of gone through most of this already, so I'm not going to, you know, bore everybody. The, the one thing on here that I think is the most, uh, that I'm the most proud of, obviously, is the one where it says the proud father of three kids. And those, you know, those, those kids are the reason I get out of bed every day and, and, and do what I do. And, and for some people, and like I said, I've worked with, you know, hundreds if not thousands of people at this point in my career, um, most people have a motivation. Sometimes it's kids, sometimes it's, you know, family and loved ones, sometimes it's a new car, it's a new boat, it's a, it's a you know, it's a thing. And I'm not here to judge or tell you that that's not good, but you need a motivation. You need something in your life. That, that wants to make you move forward. I meet too many traders that come through my doors at T3 Live that, you know, are, are hamsters on wheels. And I'm sure for many of you that are listening to me, you know, ask yourself the question, does your time spent watching the markets, trading the markets, engaged in the markets, equal a level of success or profitability that you feel in your mind is commensurate with what you do? And you know, I'm basically saying, is your time worth, are you getting paid for your time? Is your time spent trading or watching the markets or talking about the markets or whatever it is you may do, you know, is it, is it equaling the dollar signs that in your head, I know every single trader uh, or, or active investor, you know, is seeking. That is the reason we do what we do. 
And if you are a hamster on a wheel, just going around in circles, spending time just going nowhere, you have to ask yourself the question, what's, you know, what's the disconnect? What is it about what I'm doing that's not you know, working? What is it about what I'm doing that's, that's not making me money? It has to be that simple. And if you can't figure out the answer, then you're not thinking the right way. Um, and my, you know, so my point is, is that the motivation, you know, is part of the process. And you know, this is the part where everybody goes, "Oh, that's so cute," and that's my six-year-old boy and my 18-month-old twin girls. And you know, they really have given me purpose to 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 want to help others and to do, you know, to do right and, you know, to to kind of take the little experience I have and the knowledge that I've built, you know, from the school of hard knocks to some degree to to want to to want to do things like this. Um, Rule number one, let's just jump into it. Be process oriented, not outcome oriented. <clears throat> no trader that I know uh, that has success, and I'm gonna define success this way, longevity. You're gonna hear me say this probably a couple of times. Show me a trader that has longevity, and I'll show you a trader that has success. I know a lot of people uh, on Wall Street, I'm, I'm, which is currently where I, where I reside, uh, I know a lot of people on Wall Street um, that have made a lot of money that no longer have a lot of money. So are they talented? I know a lot of people that have made seven plus figures a year that no longer uh, that no longer do that. That they've actually lost that money. So m I don't define uh, success as a trader necessarily by dollar signs. Yes, it's a meritocracy, and yes, that is how most people are are, are gauged and and judged. But what I define success as long as you're a trader that's got 20 years of experience, 25, 30 years of experience, chances are you're looking at a very successful trader. It's very hard to get to that point without something to back it up. Um, and the, 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 the how that relates to rule number one is that what, what ultimately makes a trader in, in the long run is having a process, having a wash, rinse, and repeat cycle. They know what they do, they don't deviate from what they do, and they can consistently do it over and over again. Now markets will change. Markets will go up. Markets will go down. Markets will go sideways. You know your process and your foundation has to provide you with the ability to to, to maneuver through through, the, through those things. Um, I spend most of my time uh, working with you know people, training people that be sub years of experience because chances are if they once they've gotten past that five year mark, you know they're, they're relatively self sufficient. Um, and they're, you know, they're kind of operating in their own, their own plan, and they have their own process. Um, the vast majority of people that get into trading get into it for an outcome. They want to make money. I trade because I want to make money, whether it's stocks, whether it's options, whatever it may be. These forks, it doesn't matter. We all have the same sort of, you know, motivation. To my children, if your motivation is to make money, and that's why you trade, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. I actually think that that's the right thing. But if you were, if there's no process, let's call the the making money, the profitability, the outcome. If there's no process, there can be no outcome. And the, like I said, the, the vast majority of people that get into trading, um, you know, don't take the time to build the process. So without the process, you can't have the outcome. Um, and, and this is something that I, you know, that I realized I was focused on making money. That's what I wanted to do, but I didn't know how I was going to do it. I was, you know, and I'll get into it a little bit later with my, you know, equations, but that's the rule number one. What is your process? Write it down. If you can't define how you make your money in one very quick, nice, neat paragraph, and I challenge everybody to at some point take out a pen, get on your computer, knock it out. Three sentences, tops. This is how I must do A, B, and C. Make it very simple. Make it right to the point. And and, and you can find your expertise in a very basic, simplistic your process. If you can do that without having to sit there and think about it for, you know, thirty minutes, then you're then, then I think you're you're at a level where you're you know moving forward, or you should. Get in. If you're sitting there and you're saying, well, sometimes I do that and other times I do this, and you know, depending on this, and, and it's very complicated, using somewhat convoluted chances are you're going to fall into that hamster on a wheel. <clears throat> um, goals. Thinking about a particular goal, does it want to help you? The answer is 
we don't have direct outcomes over our goals. I can say, and I've heard people say it a million times, I want to make you know, X, Y, Z amount of money. That's my goal. My goal is to make $100,000. My goal is to make a million dollars. You insert the, the, the dollar amount. But there's, no, the, the, there's nothing that's, that's set in stone that says you have direct control over that. What you have control over are the building blocks, the foundations, the things you do to, to move in the right direction so that you have the chance of achieving that goal. I, you know, and it's human nature to, to some extent. Those that, that, that say, you know, if you're one of those that fall into the camp of, you know, I could always lose 10 pounds or I could always lose weight. It's no different, right? So I can say I want to lose 50 pounds. But if I don't put the, the process in place so that I have a chance to achieve that, doesn't mean I'm going to do it in six months. Doesn't mean I'm going to do it in a year. But that's the mentality. You know, we can... You know, you can't necessarily have direct out, uh, control over your goals, but you can lay the blocks, you know, to go in the right direction. Um, you know, and trading results are everything. You trade the markets with the goal of making money. I've said that already. But like I said before, you can't consume yourself with making money. If you are focused on the outcome, and I'm, again, the outcome is making money, and you have no process of which to do that, you're not going to have an outcome. No process, no outcome. So like I said before, and again, I, when I do these webinars, I tend to, you know, I'll tend to jump ahead or, you know, I, I, I try not to go you know, slide by slide. But this is a basic, basic step. What's your process? And I'll tell you a real quick story, um, and I tell this, you know, pretty much every time I speak because I think, or, you know, depending on the topic, but I think it really hit home for me, and it was my, it was my aha moment. It's the moment the little light bulb in my head went off. And, you know, I was at a, 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 a gathering, a social gathering, and I was seated across, uh, it was a dinner event, and I was seated across the table from this other gentleman. At the time, I was probably about 25 years old. Uh, the guy across the table from me was probably, I would say, in his late 50s, early 60s. And, you know, he had been trading for 30 plus years, 25, 30 years. And we struck up a conversation. You know, we both had this, you know, I'm a trader, you're a trader thing in common. And he said to me very clearly at the dinner table, and this is a guy who did not know me, uh, he said to me, so how do you make your money? And I said, well, you know, I do this, and sometimes I do that, and, and you know, I'm, uh, and I really didn't have, like I said before, I didn't have that, this is what I do. Confidently, you know, uh, uh, simplistically, and, and, and just laid it out. And he looked at me and he said, look, you know, no disrespect, and right then and there, when somebody says no disrespect, you know, you know what's coming next. He said, "Failure for you is a question uh, is not a question of when, but uh, not a question of if, but a question of when. Um, failure for you is not a question of if, but a question of when." And here's a guy who didn't know me from a hole in the wall, and said to me, "Look, you're you're you know you're you're gonna you'll be out of this business faster than than than, than you know." Um, and this coming from a guy again who had a lot of longevity, he knew he had that you know he had that knowledge because he'd been down that road, you know what it takes to succeed and, and what it doesn't. Embrace your failure uh, as rule number two. Failure is not a bad thing. Failure is a part of trading. You know, if you haven't walked out of your, your office, your, your basement, your, wherever it is you conduct your trading activities, regardless of what you trade, feeling like, uh, you know, just the lowest form on earth, you know, chances are you're really, you know, you're not a trader. Um, failure is, uh, it, it's, it's, it's extremely important because if, if you have never failed, and again, this is a lesson in business, uh, not necessarily just in trading. If you've never failed and you've never experienced what it's like to fail, how can you possibly fathom what it's like to succeed? And I, I really don't know any people in my life that are, you know, what I consider successful that haven't failed at something. It's very, very rare. Uh, even Paul Tudor Jones, who, you know, what many consider one of the greatest, you know, modern day tra traders out there, you know, went broke twice. Um, so, you know, failing is not, is not, it's not something you should be ashamed of or embarrassed. Failure without understanding why you failed is embarrassing. <clears throat> um, and again, I see a lot of that with, with beginners, those that are, you'd say, less than two years you know, in. Um, being wrong is, is, is shameful to them. It, it, they, they hang their head low, and they think that that's something that, that, that you know, they're supposed to be embarrassed about. Uh, the only thing about being wrong is, is not learning from it, is not you know, being able to say, look, I was wrong, move on to the next. I say that a lot. Move on to the next. Um, 
you know, sometimes wrong is being, you know, is more valuable than succeeding. As Tom Watson said uh, from IBM, you know, if you want to be a success, double your rate of failure. Uh, I, you know, as a, as a, not only a trader, but as a business person, I, enc I encourage my employees to fail. Because if they're failing, it means they're trying. Uh, obviously, we, we do our best to control the failures. But if you're not failing, it means you're not trying. <clears throat> it's not personal. You know, the, the business of trading is the business of risk. Your job, you know, when people ask me what I do, I, I don't typically say I'm a trader. I mean, it depends on the day you catch me. Um, but I don't typically say I'm a trader because I don't really view or fancy myself as a trader. Even though I buy and sell securities, you know, and I know that that's probably the world that I, you know, the, the moniker that I fall under, I consider myself a risk analyst because what I do every day is think about, you know, where I'm buying and how that relates to how much I'm going to lose or how much I could potentially lose. To me, it's a, it's a business of risk. I am in the business of risk. It is that that is that is trading, and with it comes you know things that that go well and things that don't go well. And anybody that tells you different is has never traded anything in their life. Um, I don't know any traders that have had at least in my in my world you know you know success week in week out, month in month out, year in year out. It, that's such a load of nonsense. Um, it's it's a part of you know what we do. There are good times and there are bad times. There are times where you will string together weeks and months and and you know of gains and gains and gains. And you know it's like uh, it's like when you play basketball and you just can't miss a shot. That 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 cylinder rim can't be wide enough. It's like throwing a a ball in an ocean. Um, and 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 then there's other times where you just you can't hit the side of the rim. Uh, not to you know speak in, in you know basketball metaphors, but there the, and that's the nature of 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 real trading. Um, and I've learned you know again these are all lessons learned to me because I was one of those traders that I I walked out of my office for several years and my head high and on other days my head was low and I kind of wore it on my sleeve. Um, and that's just it's not you can't take it personal. It's not about you. It's not a. It's not a reflection of you. Um, I, I don't love. You know. I don't. I don't love stocks and I don't love markets. I love. You know. My family and my friends and, and the people in my life. Uh, and I and I've I've learned via time. Time is again the best teacher. That it's not personal and, I, and there has to be separation. Um, <clears throat> let's move on. And like I said before, I am going to go on, on the on the speedier side because. I do want to talk about some charts and some trades and you know things that I do, um, and I know that this is again part of this is is all personal. It comes from me. It's about me. It was written by me. It's it is you know, and I could probably spend an hour, if not more, on each particular rule. But I want to kind of give you a, a brief you know food for thought, if you would, something to think about, a little bit to to, to chew on as you you know as we shut this uh, the, the, this webinar down and and. You know, you, you go on in, in with your personal, you know, agenda this evening or whatever it is you do. If I can get you to think just for a second about how you think, then you know, I think that this has been a successful webinar. Um, price is everything. Yeah, I learned this a long time ago. There's nothing more primary. There's nothing more important to me as a trader than price. I've read. The Encyclopedia of Technical Analysis. I think I've actually read it two or three times. Um, I've read a ton of books. You know, I went through that Holy Grail syndrome years and years and years ago, seeking you know the indicator, the oscillator, the moving average, the you know the the whatever it may be that was going to be the thing that was going to propel me to be the trader I wanted to be. And through a long and arduous path um, of you know. Uh, success followed by you know failure followed by basically just being a hamster on a wheel trying new things I learned that the only thing that mattered to me was price price goes up we make money price goes down we can make money price goes sideways if you actually know what you're doing you can make money as well so what I focus on and, and, and everything else is sort of a derivative of price is just price that's what matters to me most because that's where money's made it's the footprint of money price goes up Price goes down, price goes sideways. Everything else, regardless of the indicator, I think somebody's mic is on. Um, 
regardless of the indicator, uh, is, is, is not even a close second. And I know that there are those who say, what about volume? Hey, you know, hey, Evan, what about volume? Um, and, and I get it. Volume has its, its, its purpose and its place and can tell you a lot about the marketplace. But like I said, everything is a derivative of price. And that is how I've made uh, a living for, for several, several years. Um, price is not subjective. It doesn't lie. Uh, people lie. You know, I call it the language of price. Uh, it's no different than, than French, Italian, Russian, German, Hebrew, whatever. Uh, and if you don't know how to read the language of price in a chart, and you are an active trader, whether you're, like I said, a day trader, a swing trader, or an active investor, however you would classify yourself, you need to take the time to learn how to read that language so that you understand how to analyze risk. Not about how to make money, how to analyze risk. Last rule, keep it simple. And I've said it a couple of times as I've motored through uh, these rules. Keep it simple. Things to consider. And again, this is all about just you. Think about it as if you, know, you are the one with the mic right now. These are the things I want you to think about. How much time are you committing to, to, to trading? How much knowledge do you have? Your personality cues. Right? What, are you patient? Are you impatient? If I were to ask you to write down you know, five or six things, how you define yourself, what would you write down? Think Larry, your mic is on. Um, your expectations. What do you expect to make as a trader? What do you expect to happen this year? What kind of results do you have? Are they good? Are they bad? Are they nowhere? Are they somewhere? Do you have any trading ideas? Now, for me, again, this is, you know, I can only speak from, from the, the, the vantage point of, of my own personal experiences. The things that helped shape, you know, shape me to not only trade but to teach others, you know, how to do the same. The, the one part of this that I finally, you know, I, I got the rules. I got it. I knew who I was. I had my own trader identity. I knew my personality cues and how to leverage that into a trading style. Um, was I, you know, impulsive and, and just jumping in and jumping out? You know, I figured out a style that would, you know, best suit me that was functional, simplistic, and I could scale. I could grow over time. And I built something, I built a lot of things, but the thing that, that, that you know, I think is a, the best reflection of, of my own personal trading is a product I built called Off the Charts. And we're going to get to this bonus in a second. But Off the Charts is basically a, 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 a swing trading newsletter um, that I produce daily, and it's got trading ideas, long, short, and it's designed for, you know, those that are, you know, seeking short-term active involvement in the equity market space. And I cover stocks uh, strictly technical, the breakout, breakdowns, you know, various different, you know, shapes and sizes. Uh, and it's exactly what I did for the last, I'd say, 12 years of my life. So I took my own personal watch list, my own personal trading agenda, and I basically just started giving it out. And by giving it out to friends and traders and you know, it kind of grew, and, and people would email me and say, can I get your thoughts for the day? And I would send it to them. And then, it, you know, it evolved, and it evolved, and it evolved. Um, and now it's, you know, probably in the hands of, you know, several thousand people. Um, and it's, it's it, you know, which, which you know, usually the next question is, well, that doesn't that diminish the value of, of what you're doing? And I'd say, no, it doesn't, because, you know, the vast majority of names that, that, that we trade or we look at are highly liquid. Um, <clears throat> and again, most of the time, most of the, most of the trades last anywhere from three days to, to three weeks. So it's not necessarily time sensitive to, to the minute or to, to the day. Um, although I will say a lot of day traders use it uh, for their own personal benefits. Um, and I'm going to get to it in a second. There's two things that I want you to remember. And I think these are really, really nice, simple, you know, ways to explain, um, you know, your, who you are as a trader. And uh, the first one is H plus W plus P. And I know you can all see it on the screen. 
But ask yourself, have you ever found yourself in a situation where you're hoping, wishing, and praying? Please go up, please go up, please go up, please go up. And you find yourself talking to the screen uh, or, or, or talking, you know, talking to your computer. Uh, I'm pretty sure, you know, if I asked you to raise your hand, I'm sure most of you would raise your hand. That just means you have no business being in the trade. And that happens to everybody. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. It's, it's, it's natural. It's a bad thing if it's every day. It's a bad thing if it's several times a week. It's a bad thing if it's anything more than once or twice a month, depending on your level of activity. If I find myself in a situation where I've lost control, I've lost my edge, you know, it just got away from me, that's okay. It's going to happen. And it's going to happen again. But move on to the next. And I find that a lot of traders that, that, that suffer the hamster on the wheel syndrome, they live in this, they live in this H plus W plus P. They, they fall in love with the trade. They get into it. It doesn't work. They refuse to accept the loss and move on. And it just becomes this cycle of, of, of you know, ups and downs until the downs eventually you know, take them out either financially or mentally. But look at the second equation. And it's a little, a little more complicated. E plus S plus T plus F plus equals L. Let me try saying that fast. E, S, T, F equals L. And basically what that is is expertise plus state, your state of mind, mind, the time you spent plus your focus is how you get longevity. And if you recall, the first thing I said or one of the first things I said was show me a trader that has longevity and I'm going to show you a successful trader. These are the elements needed to achieve longevity, expertise, being great at something, even if it's one thing. I am not a trader that can do several things. Uh, and I know that you know, many of you, from listening to the, all the good presentations tonight, you've been exposed to various things, whether it's you know, trading spreads and options or, or, or other, you know, other walks of life. The only thing you need to do is be good at the thing you're doing. That's it. That was really, you know, part of my aha moment. Just be good at what I did. And, you know, I'm a long, short equities trader, um, you know, and I've been able to sustain and build not only a personal career, but, a, you know, a, a, a relatively, you know, good business around trading um, in various capacities. I've worked with, you know, like I said, thousands of people. So I kind of know at this point in my life what it's going to take to succeed. And I know that, you know, most of us get excited when we have a good week or a good month. But that's not longevity. Think about, you know, just do some light meditation here. Think about where you're going to be in five years. What's your trading going to look like? Can you envision it? Think about 10 years from now. What's it going to look like? And what's it going to take for, it to, for you to get there? It's going to take number two, putting all those pieces together in one nice, simple, complete package. Um, one of the questions that I typically ask of, of you know, anybody I've ever worked with is the question of how much money did you make three Wednesdays ago? And I ask this all the time. I say, you know, every time I present to a room of people, how much money did you make three Wednesdays ago? Somebody asked me this question once. And I looked at them and I said, what? And they said, how much money did you make three Wednesdays ago? And immediately everybody's eyes, they look up because now they're thinking. So they're looking at the ceiling and they're saying, ah, three Wednesdays ago. I have no idea. And the answer is, you shouldn't know. It doesn't matter. And if, it, if you remember three Wednesdays ago, because that's the day you blew up your account or you lost some inordinate amount of money, or on the vice, you made some in order, there's a problem. Because trading is a, is a series of events that happen over a long period of time. And it's hard for people to, to, to recognize that. Uh, move on to the next. Take your trade. Some of them are going to be great. Some of them aren't going to be as great. I will tell you now, just in a very generalization, my trades typically work like this. A third, a third, a third. A third are substantial gains. A third are within a what I call the break-even zone, meaning up or down a certain percentage, and they net out probably against each other. 
and a third will never trigger. Meaning a third of the tr a third of the stocks that I put on my watch list never even go through my buy or sell points, so they never trigger. So it's a bunch of stocks that bunch of trades that you know net me probably a little money and a third of my trades that make the vast majority of money. It's the, 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 the majority of money I make is the minority of time. Think about it like 70-30. 70% of the money I make is probably made 30% of the time. And that's the way it goes. And that's the way I've built my career. And it requires patience and, 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 and you know, being able to kind of sit on the sidelines and cash from time to time. And it requires having focus. And it requires, you know, really, really narrowing your prices and understanding risk. And you know, it's it's really basically the, the combination of the second equation. So off the charts, I mentioned it before, off the charts is, is is my product. It is, you know, what I, you know, me personally, I spend several, several hours a day putting it together and it's a series of of, of trading ideas. And I'm gonna, you know, in, in this presentation there's a couple of examples, but I, it really is a very unique tool, and I'm actually going to, um, if I can figure this out, uh, I'm, and then here's a couple of trade ideas. This was a suggested buy in, in, in GoPro. This was, you know, a few weeks ago. Uh, entry 4030, stops for 3760, and if, you know, if, if uh, you know, I, I don't do this before or after thing, but, you know, for those of you that are, you know, follow that, that particular trade, that stock proceeded to trade close to 100 from that point. Now, we sold it at 47. I will tell you that right now. I sold this, I bought it at 40 and change, and I sold it at 47, and I watched it go another $50 higher. But you know what? It was a great trade, and in the event I get a chance to do it again, I do it again, because you move on to the next. I don't worry about what happens after, I just go on to the next particular trade. Here's a trade in DDD. Again, you can see the entry points. This stock traded, you know, within a matter of days, went right to 60. Um, there's a trade in EOG to the short side. Shorting energy and oil last month, two months ago, uh, was a very, very profitable position uh, for us. Here's a trade in MNST. Again, I'm showing you the befores. I'm not showing you the afters. You can look at these trades. I'm sure you all have your own charting platforms. This is a trade I suggested short in uh, Monster Beverage. We got stopped out for a loss. Trade in Loco got stopped out for a loss. Trade in X to the short side, shorted 44 half, covered 40 bucks. Good trade. Again, so this is the kind of stuff that we do, and and I want to actually flip. Uh, I'm going to show you a different screen now. I don't know if I can find it. Okay, so here is um, here's last night's off the charts, and I wanted to show you, you know, what what what's going on now. So what you get every night, and this is delivered to your inbox. Uh, at 7 p.m. each night, you get a table of long ideas and a table of short ideas. Now, in this table, you will see various criteria: entry price, you know, the stock, the entry price, the stop, the target zone, the idea status, whether it's a pending trade, meaning it has not triggered, it's open, meaning it is triggered through the price, and then the respective gains or losses, the earnings date, the next earnings dates, and the 90-day average volume. Again, this is all functional information from which I always, this was basically my game plan as a trader every day, every week, and I did this every single night for years and years and years. I also shoot a video. So every night I not only, you know, provide all the, you know, trade ideas, uh, but I shoot a video that covers all those ideas every single night. So you get usually what's, what's about a 15 minute video, sometimes I'll go as long as 30 minutes, Typically, uh, depending on what I have to say, there's always lessons learned, entry spots, things we did well. So it's a learning tool beyond just an ideas tool. So I give you the ideas with the you know the parameters, and then you know every night I will reanalyze those ideas to talk about you know whether things are changing, you know up, moving our stops, adjusting our targets because trading is not static. You can't just put a price on a piece of paper and say this is where it's going to go. We watch every day and we adjust our prices accordingly based on, like I said, the language of price. And then every night I'll update, you know, a couple of uh, uh, charts just to show you, you know, any, 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 you know, current price room. So here's last night. Uh, we removed our long in Apple. You, know, you can see down here, Apple. Apple hit our adjusted target price. 
Uh, we suggested an entry at 108.80. We sold yesterday at 115, um, and we trailed stops along the way. Uh, you can see this here at 111.55. Now, the more you do it, the more you get comfortable with it. Here's a trade that we had short GoPro from 77 and a quarter. We covered it 80 bucks for a loss. Uh, here's a trade in PANW, Palo Alto. We bought 107.50, and I sold yesterday at 109.20. Uh, so sometimes trades don't always go as planned. Even though I said the target's 116, uh, I issued a sell alert yesterday at 109.20. Here's a trade in brocade. Brocade today closed, I think, right around 11.60. Uh, the entry spot was, was 11 bucks. Here's a trade in Dollar Tree. Uh, today closed around 62. So every night, you know, I'm, I'm giving, you know, what I think are low-hanging fruit trade ideas. So once you get past, and again, for me, like I said, this is a product that I built for me. Uh, the original inception and creation of this was all about having a good, strong watch list. And again, it, it does flow with the market. In certain market environments, you're going to see, you know, the vast majority of trade ideas will be long. In other market environments, and the one uh, that I think I had up on the screen uh, from the presentation, and I'll flip back to that. Uh, let's see here. Uh, the vast majority were short. I know it's hard to see, but you can see we had probably 15 or 16 different shorts uh, in the por you know in this portfolio, um, if that's what you want to call it. Uh, in this was basically you know you can see the date range here was basically you know, from mid-September to, to the beginning of October. Typically, there's, you know, a few trade ideas a week. I don't overload with trade ideas. I don't guarantee you that I'm going to give you five trade ideas a week. I, I flow with the market. When I see it and when I think that is, you know, clearly defined risk-reward, I put it out there. I, I, you know, I don't believe in, in the guarantees that of giving somebody something. It's like trying to fit a square peg in a round hole. It just doesn't work, and that's not the nature of what we do. Um, and, and the product, again, is a long, short, equities-driven product, and it will flow at the market. In some market environments, you're going to see, you know, more of an equal-weighted portfolio. Right now, we probably have, you know, six or seven longs and maybe four shorts, um, and, and there's a calculated reason for that. In, in other environments, you know, you'll see that balance clearly shift uh, to one side or the other. So the product does, you know, basically flow with the market. And you're getting, you know, my insights and my expertise of, you know, at this point it's actually 17 years of, of trading um, from somebody that, you know, has been doing this for years and years and years. Here's a trade idea in uh, NBR to the short side. Um, and this is basically what I do every single day. Now, T3 Live has lots of other offerings and things that we do. But as far as, as you know, as far as just keeping it simple, Off the Charts is by far our, you know, biggest product. Because I think it really speaks to those that, you know, need to keep things simple. You got a day job, you know, you're not trading every single minute of every single day, or you just need the information that's designed to really keep you focused, uh, while at the same time trying to teach you and give you insights and, you know, market analysis that, you know, it is all, is all real. Um, you know, that's that's kind of what what you get in this webinar is basically what you get every single night. Now, granted, I may, you know, talk about Know, trades a lot more, but um, I send out alerts via text. I forgot to mention that. So when I do see a trade alert, I will send it out via text message so it hits your, you know, it hits your phone in a, in a, in a rapid way. Uh, I've found that over the years, I used to send out email alerts and they were just too slow, um, you know, for sometimes the pace at which I wanted people to get the information. But I do both. Um, and, and that's what, you know, that's what I do. Uh, to me, it's, it's you know, it, it's a, a labor of love. Um, I don't think, and again, I, I, I kind of humble myself as much as I've been fortunate enough to have the experiences I've had and be able to build my biz business the way I've been able to build it. It wasn't without, you know, hardship uh, and some level of suffering and, and even failure. And, you know, I, I know that where there's a will, there's a way. Trading is not that hard. People make it hard. I made it hard. Um, I overanalyzed, I second guessed, I didn't have confidence, I, you know, I was shorting strong stocks and buying weak stocks and trying to pick bottoms and, and I've done it all. I have done it all. Um, and I've, you know, kind of rebuilt myself over the years to, because I've gotten my head, you know, in the right direction. My five rules really are my, you know, my, my keys beyond the playbook, beyond the trades themselves, beyond the what to buy, where to buy it and, you know, there's such a deeper level of understanding that needs to go needs to go on here. 
Uh, and I do have, you know, a nice, through this product, through, you know, through Off the Charts, I've developed a nice relationship with a lot of my readers that email me, you know, every night asking me questions and, you know, that I answer those questions in the video. And, you know, I think it's a really, really great interactive learning experience. Um, and like I said, the, the, the product functions exactly like my results as a trader. One third, one third, one third. Because uh, people say, well, how do you do? You know, what are your percent returns? Um, and that's generally, you know, what, what it is we do. I launched the product uh, as a portfolio type service with alerts only a few weeks ago. So I don't have enough information to really give you some sort of returns. But it is, it will wind up being a third, a third, a third. A third of the trades that I provide over the course of a year will probably be, you know, stellar gains. We, we, we took a, a short in GPRO a couple weeks ago that, that we locked in a 20% move on. Um, we were long uh, Walter uh, WLT a couple of weeks ago, a few days ago, two weeks ago maybe. Uh, that was, a, I think, a 20% gain. Um, then we have our series of, you know, two, 3% losses. Um, you know, we never let anything get that far away from us. And that's the beauty of it. It's a risk-controlled, you know, environment. Uh, I, I always update my, my stops. I'm always trailing stops. I'm always kind of, you know, with you as these trades, you know, ebb and flow. Um, am I putting out new ideas every day? No, I am not. I'm putting out, you know, usually, like I said, a handful, and it's all relative to uh, market conditions. Um, and that's, you know, that, that's really it. I think it's a, it's, this is an opportunity for those of you, I think, at a very, you know, nice price. It's, it's, we're not, because of uh, the webinar today, we're knocking a little bit off the $99 a month to $75 a month. Um, and, and that's, you know, because the people at Investor in, Inspiration allow us this platform, and, you know, we, we want to make sure that we can, you know, make it affordable for everybody. Um, and I think for the, the dollars spent, the return is, is, is uh, you know, way beyond that, not necessarily in terms of just percentage gains, but also from lessons learned and, and insights from, from me personally. Um, and that's, that, that, that really wraps it up. I'm going to take a few minutes here and go through some of these questions. Uh, just give me a sec uh, so I can kind of chew into some of these. And we have about three minutes left. That doesn't give me much time. Uh, do I just trade stock or options also? I personally trade stocks, uh, I'd say 98% of the time. Um, I do have plans in the not too distant future to add some options trades to the product, as I know there's a su su substantial demand for it. Um, but I am, this is really a, a, a stock-centric product. Now, I will tell you that many of my readers get the trade ideas and because of their own personal expertise and skill sets will buy calls or puts or spreads or you know relative to the to the to the trade you know they'll they'll put on their own options trade around it um, and just use my product as more of a research tool uh, you know another set of eyeballs giving you trade ideas and then you know you can trade them as best fit for your own risk profile your own asset class um, and your own style I know a lot of day traders use it um, how long you've been doing this what are your long-term results? Uh, I've been doing this since 97. Uh, in terms of my long-term results, I've, you know, again, without getting into numbers, because I just don't think that that's something that I, I think is appropriate, but not only have I, you know, found personal success as a trader, but like I said, I've built, you know, a, a, I think the largest prop firm in the country uh, in T3 Trading Group as a result. We have about 750 traders trading firm capital. So that's any indication of what I've been able to do um, as a trader, because I, you know, I reinvested in myself and, and I put money to work to build businesses around, you know, my skill set. Uh, and, and some of my partners, many of you may know my partner, Scott Redler. Um, but anyway, you know, that's, that's, that's kind of my, my story. I, I, you know, I'm not this guy who will tell you that I've made a lot of money trading and, I've, and I bought yachts and mansions because and, that's, that's just not who I am. Uh, I think that's a lot of nonsense. I've reinvested in myself. Uh, and I've leveraged my skill set as a trader into, you know, other businesses. Um, but, the pro you know, so I'll let you, you know, kind of answer that yourself. Um, do I discuss Forex commodities? Not really. We will trade ETFs. We, uh, you know, we were talking about gold uh, and some of the gold stocks, GDXJ, uh, in the last couple of days. So it's not that I won't trade the, uh, you know, I don't trade the commodity, but I will trade, you know, ETFs that correlate if in the event I, I see opportunity. Um, there, uh, four longs, 
four long, six longs, four shorts. Now, if you have a yeah, so the question is, six longs, four shorts. Now, if you have a 500K portfolio, do you still hold that many positions? I do. Um, so, you know, again, it's, it's regardless of the capital, it's just percentages. It's all, I think, you know, everything is a percentage. Um, are you a day trader? I am not a day trader. I, I have been in, in the prior life. I do know how to day trade. I can tell you all about time frame analysis and execution time frames and analytical time frames and you know how I can leverage getting you know gr good entry at, with day trading knowledge um, I'm very very well versed as a day trader but I based on my personality cues you know I, I never really found that it was it fit for me um, I do know how to make money I found that the most you know I, I was very successful as a day trader in pockets of volatility uh, but my success as a swing trader far surpasses anything I've ever done with the consistency um, uh, like I said as, as a swing trader my consistency went way up uh, my returns went way up my stress went way down um, you know my it just worked better for me again it's a, it was a personality cue uh, can I get a recording of this tomorrow I'll leave that up to the guys running the show here uh, how many stocks do you have in your watch list right now uh, let's see. As of the letter tonight, we are long. We have uh, long, on the long side: uh, Peabody Energy, BTU, Dollar Tree, Walter, WLT, uh, UFS, um, Brocade, BRCD, Goldman Sachs, and Cree, uh, of which everything is open except for BTU. Um, we closed out yesterday, and you can see on the, on the we closed out Apple for gains. We closed out Palo Alto. And uh, we closed out GPRO for a 1% uh, loss. So uh, and on the short side, we have four ideas. So there's about seven longs and four shorts. Um, all right, let's, uh, I think we'll call it there. Um, if you want to check out more, it's t3live.com forward slash OTC. That's off the charts. Uh, I'm Evan Lazarus. I really greatly appreciate your time personally. Um, you've taken the initiative, and I, and I, you know, I think that's fantastic for everybody. There's a ton to be learned and only a small amount of time. So uh, thank you all personally, and thank you to the guys at uh, Investor Inspiration for, for giving me this, this platform.